Thank you very much, Dr. Walensky. I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking about our plans for the future and our current activities on the development of a universal coronavirus vaccine. First slide, please. A little bit over a month ago, my NIH colleagues and I wrote a perspective in the New England Journal of Medicine talking about the urgent need of a universal coronavirus vaccine. The reason we did this perspective was to bring to the attention of the public, next slide, the fact that in reality, over the past 20 years since 2002, we've had three coronavirus major disease outbreaks, SARS, MERS, and COVID-19, which we are currently experiencing. However, since September of 2020, there have been five SARS-CoV-2 variants of concern, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and now the current Omicron. And so obviously, innovative approaches are needed to induce broad and durable protection against coronaviruses that are known and some that are even at this point unknown, hence the terminology pan-coronavirus vaccine. But I want to explain why this is somewhat of a complicated issue. Next slide. This is what we call a phylogenetic tree of the coronaviruses. If you look in the center of the circle, that's the original source. And like a tree, it has many, many branches. And as you can see, there are many different types of coronaviruses. Those that have affected humans are in red font. If you look at the alpha coronaviruses, the two there with yellow, were really part of the four common cold coronaviruses that we each get challenged and infected with usually in the winter months. But if you look among the beta coronaviruses, you see the three that have caused pandemic threats and reality. Next slide. So let's put a, a circle on the SARS-CoV-2 where we are. We've had now five different variants, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and Omicron that have impacted us here in the United States. Also, if you go to the next slide, you see that there's a good relationship, next slide, please, between the SARS-CoV-1 and CoV-2. They are both what we call sobecoviruses, which are a subset of the beta coronaviruses. The reason I say this is that looking at the entirety of the coronavirus phylogenetic tree, it would be unreasonable to think we're going to get a pan-coronavirus for all of them. But we can focus in on some of the subsets, particularly the SARS-CoV-2 and the entirety of the sobecovirus, which includes SARS-CoV-1. Next slide. Having said that, what are we doing? The NIH, particularly NIAID, has invested a little bit more than $3 billion overall on coronavirus research since the pandemic began. A subset of that is coronavirus vaccine research, thus far about $1.5 billion, with investments in basic and clinical biomedical research, particularly recent awards of about $43 million to four academic institutions to do specific research to develop these types of vaccines, which I just mentioned. But already, there have been results from funding that has been gone on over the past couple of years. Next slide. These are just a few of the scientific reports of examples of promising candidates that are at preclinical, namely in a mouse or another small animal, as well as non-human primates, as well as getting ready or already in phase one trials. Next slide. These are based on a concept of looking at a vaccine construct. I had said in a previous White House press briefing, when I described the mRNA, that one can look at it as a vaccine platform and a vaccine immunogen. The platform currently now that we talk about a lot is the mRNA or the ad vector, whereas the vaccine immunogen is, for example, that spike protein in its prefusion stabilized form that served the basis for the mRNA and other vaccines. So here's two examples of what is going on now. Next slide. For example, a number of groups have used the nanoparticle approach, which is the platform. The immunogen are the different spike protein fragments, which when put in a vaccine would lead to a diverse antibody response, hence covering a broad array of a particular virus. Next slide. Another example 
is an inactivated whole virus vaccine, we have different versions of the coronaviruses that are delivered by an intranasal mix. And this is important because this will go a long way to protecting against infection and spread of infection. I just give those two examples because they're two of many that are now currently being produced. Next slide. The final slide is some key points. I don't want anyone to think that pan-coronavirus vaccines are literally around the corner in a month or two. It's going to take years to develop in an incremental fashion. Some of these are already in phase one clinical trials. Don't forget, however, that our current vaccine regimens do provide strong protection, particularly when used with a booster against severe coronavirus disease and death. So do not wait to receive your primary vaccine regimen. And if you are vaccine, please get your booster if you are eligible. Back to you, Jeff. Thanks, doctors. With that, let's open it up for some questions. Kevin? 